Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Everybody noticed the insane thing someone just blew up in front of the White House. Yesterday the entire United States of America stood in shock as somebody was able to successfully blow something up in front of the White House. Despite the WH being empty, a construction crew was still hard at work. Imagine their shock when they looked out at the lawn and saw. Somebody blew up a giant, inflatable Trump chicken right outside the White House. Nobody is certain where the 23-foot-tall chicken came from or exactly what it represents. Was it an anti-Trump message or simply someone with too much free time? A similar chicken had been seen at a tax day protest event because, you know, liberals protest everything. Still, many concerned voices on social media suggested that Secret Service should have removed it from the National Mall in case it was filled with poison gas or something. Now, to be fair. It would be very hard to perform a gas attack with that little gas outdoors. Do you think liberals are doing a good job protesting Trump? Honestly, if this is what they are doing now, it's a big step up from burning buildings and blocking interstates. Either way, it's a ridiculous looking chicken. Share this out if you think Trump deserves more respect. Shut down a U.S. judge on the Benghazi case just gave Hillary the worst news of her life. Things are heating up on Hillary Clinton. Politico reported a federal judge ruled on Tuesday that the State Department did not do a thorough job looking for emails Clinton sent about the attack on the Benghazi compound on September 11, 2012. But here comes the best part. The judge ordered the State Department to try to find those emails again. That's right this case is back open. The ruling was the result of a lawsuit from Judicial Watch, which argued that the Department of State's search for Clinton emails was incomplete as it did not include a search within the State Department's own systems. The State Department relied instead entirely on outside sources including personal handovers from Huma Abedin and other top aides. The State Department found 348 emails connected to Benghazi that were sent either to or from Clinton over the course of five months after the attack. U.S. District Court Judge Amit Mehta ruled in favor of Judicial Watch, saying, To date, state has searched only data compilations originating from outside sources, Secretary Clinton, her former aides, and the FBI. It has not, however, searched the one record system over which it has always had control and that is almost certain to contain some responsive records, the state.gov email server. If Secretary Clinton sent an email about Benghazi to Abadine, Mills, or Sullivan at his or her state.gov email address, or if one of them sent an email to Secretary Clinton using his or her state.gov account, then state's server presumably would have captured and stored such an email. Therefore, state has an obligation to search its own server for responsive records. Boom. Seems obvious enough, right? Maybe check State Department servers instead of relying exclusively on the people you're investigating to give you everything? According to Politico, state officials have said emails were not routinely archived during Clinton's time as Secretary of State, how surprising, so it may still be difficult for investigators to find those emails. Nevertheless, this is a huge ruling that both exposes how shoddily the last investigation was done and opens the door to finally finding the truth of what happened in Benghazi. Share 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 to expose Hillary once and for all. HT Politico Morning Joe just said this sick thing about Trump that will ruin him. Joe Scarborough, host of the MSNBC television show, Morning Joe, has made it abundantly clear that he has a vendetta against the president. His latest rant against the president has to do with the president allegedly choosing to watch or read more conservative news outlets that support his presidency. 
it seems it hurts Morning Joe's feelings, that Trump chooses not to watch his show, calling him sick for reading conservative news briefings. So, I guess that makes us all sick? I'm sure that everyone, in Joe's view, that doesn't buy into the liberal feeding frenzy against Trump is somehow sick. Joe even said that he is glad that Trump doesn't watch his show, because it allegedly makes him angry. Then he said I don't understand how you have an accurate view of the world if everything sent to you is filtered. So you're telling me that what Morning Joe reports isn't filtered? That's just a load of baloney. What he reports is completely skewed left, so that his left-leaning liberal viewers will watch. Why would Trump listen to that garbage? It's fake news. Sounds like a boatload of sour grapes, if you ask me. What do you think? Do you think it makes sense for Trump to prefer to watch, read conservative news? Comment yes or no and share to support our president. H. T. The Daily Caller That's my president. Trump's just revealed new VA reform that will make everyone cry happy tears. You might have missed this one last week, cause the media definitely wasn't advertising it. But on Tuesday, August 3rd President Trump and Veterans Affairs Secretary David Shulkin presented a brand new service for veterans health care, mobile health service. The Veterans Affairs telehealth services will allow veterans to make appointments on their smartphones or computers. This new service will make it quicker and easier for veterans to access their health benefits. This is a part of President Trump's plan to modernize and reform the VA, which has been struggling in recent years amid scandal and inefficiency. President Trump said of the new tech, This will significantly expand access to care for our veterans, especially those who need help in the area of mental health. It will make a tremendous difference for the veterans in rural locations in particular. President Trump even got to joke with one of the veterans using the service for a skin condition during the presentation, saying, Looked pretty good to me, what do I know? Then he added, to the doctors, Please make sure his skin is perfect, okay? Sounds like more great news from President Trump. Our president loves the vets, he promised to serve them, and he is delivering. Isn't it strange to have a politician actually do the things they promised? I could definitely get used to this. The media tried to bury this so fast because it was a nice story share it 25,000 times to get past them and show the world the kind of awesome president we have. H.T. The Washington Times Moments ago Newt Gingrich dropped a bombshell that will scare North Korea senseless. North Korea has been operating under the assumption that the United States is still run by the bureaucratic cowardly Democrats and has been pushing the boundary time and time again. The times of letting them go unpunished with their increasing threat of nuclear weaponry is even more of a reason why more and more people are calling for the U.S. to be prepared for action and not just sanctions that have been proven time and time again to not work. That is exactly what Newt Gingrich said during an appearance on Hannity's show earlier tonight. The U.S. needs to cut through the bureaucratic tape and be able to move efficiently to meet the ever-growing threat of North Korea. This is what Gingrich had to say on the matter. We should be moving with an intensity and an aggressiveness, cutting through the bureaucracy, developing a series of steps as I outlined in the last segment, that enables us to say to North Korea, we don't need to contain you diplomatically. If you are behaving in a stupid way, we are surrounding you with mechanisms that will coerce you, make you harmless, and ultimately crush you. Gingrich is exactly right that the U.S. needs to be proactive in addressing the problem rather than waiting until the problem gets beyond control. North Korea keeps pushing forward despite sanctions, so obviously starker measures should be looked at. Bombshell shocking new details from Lynch probe reveal corruption that will even make Democrats gasp. Former Attorney General Loretta Lynch is being investigated by someone who had previously worked for her. Yep. 
You heard that right. Just when we thought the Democrats couldn't make their corruption more obvious, they find ways to sink to new lows. This gets complicated, so here is a breakdown. Former Justice Department attorney Paige Herwig was on the airplane when Bill Clinton and Loretta Lynch met for their infamous tarmac meeting. The meeting took place a few hours before the Justice Department made an announcement on the Hillary Clinton email investigation. Hurwick then helped draft the Justice Department's media talking points on the meeting. Hurwick now serves as a Democrat counsel on the Senate Judiciary Committee. This news is crazy. How do the Democrats keep getting away with this stuff? They do it right in front of our faces, and guess what, the media doesn't report it. The media definitely won't report on this new Loretta Lynch scandal either, that's why we're going to try to get around them by sharing 5 million times. Brick by brick, they will be exposed. H.T. The Washington Times S. Trump's top aide Stephen Miller just destroyed the MSM with just one sentence. The leftists in the mainstream media have already made it very clear that they hate Trump's top aide and speechwriter, Stephen Miller. CNN almost picked an actual fight with him in a press briefing for God's sake. Well today Miller got his perfect revenge when he went on Fox and made a few declarations about President Trump that will drive the left crazy. Stephen Miller declared, President Trump is the most gifted politician of our time. Not only that, Miller also let everyone know that he believes Trump is the best orator to be president in generations, presumably since Ronald Reagan himself. Miller also took a second to fire shots directly at the MSM when he said that Trump is aware they will do anything they can think of to try and take him down. Honestly, it's just sad. However, the driving point of the whole interview was this. Trump, is the leader of this nationwide and worldwide populist movement and it's about lifting working class people, black, Hispanic, white, all backgrounds. If you think President Trump does a better job representing the working American than the hoity-toity elitist media, then share this ad and show everyone the Trump train is still strong.